Good morning. Morning. What are you doing? Cleaning the floor. Cleaning the floor? Yeah. Since Carl left, the place has gone to shit. <laughs> Come on then, let's see what you do. I know. It's a good floor cleaner. Eh? I bet none of your other clients do this for you, do you? You rock up to film a video. Never ever. I don't made. even know what we're going to do today. And I'm cleaning the floor for you. Cool. So I'm going to finish cleaning my floor because it's oily from the engine stripped down last week. Just check that video out. And now we're going to strip down a DCT gearbox out of an R8 because I've got to put a load of Dodson bits in it. So come back after the intro. <laughs> The floor's clean. Well done, mate. I know. See? Like, every day, make your bed. Even if your day goes to absolute shit, at least you've got one job done. So, I've made my bed today, and I've cleaned my floor. And you make a lovely cup of tea. I do make good tea. That reminds me. Who's making tea? George, make tea! Anyone else want one while we're at it? <laughs> so, right. So, a bit of housekeeping. Uh, if you haven't already, and if you'd be kind enough to, go on Carl's page and leave him a message. Even if you can't do kindly donate, leave him a message. He is back in Swindon. He's had his op. Um, he's chatting to us on a group chat. He's got a long way to go, a long, long way to go. I don't think he's even out of hospital till towards the end of February because they're pumping full of antibiotics to get rid of the infection. But I think he's lonely. Um, because he's stuck up there on his own. So, Carl underscore Trevette, drop him a message, get on the crowd, just give him abuse. Abuse is always good. Um, you know, he's, he's a good lad, he's having a hard time. Um, I honestly don't know when he'll be back. I honestly don't know, there's always a job for him. I honestly don't know if he'll be back. This is really serious, what's happened. And what's gonna go on in the future is serious so we'll see what's what so reach out to him give him some love um you know good old grumps now he's got something to be grumpy about literally yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll um we'll put his um we'll drop some tags and stuff yeah. yeah yeah it's cool but yeah he's he's alive he's on the mend he's chatting to us on a group chat um and he's back in swindon so at least he's near his family so like his wife can go up and see him yeah. and i don't think the kids can go in um so he hasn't seen his kids since before christmas now um, obviously FaceTime and stuff, but it's not the same, so. Uh, to be honest, the miserable bugger probably misses his dog more than anything else. <laughs> um, I would say I miss his tea, but he never made tea. Uh, and when he did make it, I think you could piss in a cup and it'd be nice to drink. Um, but yeah, it's, it is different without him here, isn't it? So yeah, but in, Give him something to watch. We'll strip a DCT gearbox out of an R8, shall we? Because he's really missed that, I can tell. Yeah, I bet. I bet. <laughs> this is all a big ploy to get out of carbon cleaning. <laughs> he's, no, he's actually sat in Bahamas or something, isn't he? He's not ill at all. So when Mitch started, obviously carbon cleaning is horrible. Um, you got to take inlet manifold off and climb up on the engine and it's like a mini sandblaster, but with walnut shell. I, I like them two were just at it like they wouldn't nobody wants to do it yeah. so obviously mitch had to catch up on the three years of carl did with no one else here so <laughs> yeah it's it is funny i'm the boss so i haven't got to do them at all so if you want your uh, your car carbon cleaning yeah yeah <laughs> book in now <laughs> special deal <laughs> we'll give you hero price for mitch <laughs> right so dl800 dct seven speed including reverses and eight speed don't trip over that wire um, this is in for uh, Dodson Pro Max 11 plate clutch, second gear upgrade, and some of the shinies. So we're going to strip it. There is certain things, because I'm a pro dealer, I can't show you. Um, but the majority of it is not rocket science. We'll just sort of go for it, strip it down. Uh, and I think it'd be pretty cool. I think so. I think so. So the main thing is, is to try and to get all the oil out of everything. So. This is, I can't remember how in depth we went into the other, because we have done a video on a strip down one, yeah, haven't we? Yeah. But I think that was the internals. Yep. So this is parking lock mechanism. So this sits on the top, wiring plug into the top. Do, do, do. As the cable comes up 
and then from the centre console under the cup holder inside there's a special pull that pulls that cable and that lifts it out of park right so if your battery goes flat you need to activate park lock or parking lock release inside the car to do it on the gen ones you get a t-bar handle in the toolkit and you go in directly through the top so the tower is different but that's parking lock so it's electronic solenoid and it literally pulls the pole out of it so it's a bit fiddly to do and in my haste to get everything here i've forgotten a obviously we have to pull parking lock mechanism out because the parking pole is in the way when we split the casings so we just go around we take the ancillaries off um, and then we can then pull the back cover off so i've got the diff out already you haven't missed much it's like 10 volts and literally just have a quick look the diff pulls out the side so you haven't missed much there but at least with the diff out i can mount it to my stand so we're not trying to break any records with this one we're not trying to do it in a certain <laughs> amount of time <laughs> that was hilarious the the the, from the the video title was can we strip a v10 gt3 engine in under an hour how long was the video dav um <laughs> slightly over an hour <laughs> by about 30 minutes uh, <laughs> it's all right it did well it's doing well so so is this one in for, um, well, wait, this is a in? twin turbo build. Right, okay. Um, so it's a twin turbo, uh, it's got a forged engine, uh, it's having a sheepy inlet manifold, and then dodge and gears, so we'll be able to push on it a little bit. Full send? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a good car. So this would be a good one that we can maybe follow in the future as well when it's when it's built yeah yeah, yeah. you have seen this car before because it was already turboed okay so that unit just comes out the top you just gotta watch for that o-ring because that o-ring seals the hydraulic pressure onto the parking mechanism so once it's out of park electronically then the hydraulic pressure will hold it out so it doesn't accidentally drop in so just gonna pop that over that okay. and then this is sat on dowels so this is a little bit more fiddly Like so, my uh, snap-on lever bars. Actually, I might use a proper snap-on lever bar because it's angled. I see you've invested in a, uh, a new trolley as well. I got a few because uh, it's stripped down central here at the minute. <laughs> People will be going, "When are you going to start putting all this crap back together?" <laughs> so. What are we waiting on? We are waiting on head gaskets for the Merchilago. Yep. There we go. So if I show you that, mate. All right. So if I flip it over. So there's parking lock, Paul, look. That's what engages in the gear. Yep. So I can't take the case at the get, that's the carrier plate. Mm -hmm. I can't pull the cassette out because the Paul overlocks the gear. So you have to lift that out first. So lift that out. All right. So that's one bit. Then we will go around the side and again, I've taken the C-clip off the top of the mechatronic unit, but we just pop the box out inside the case. There we go. There she goes. Here she goes. Nine times out of ten the O-ring sticks to the bloody case and it doesn't come with the cover. Like so, and then while you're doing it, gently, gently here, so you've got to push. Don't pull that, because you'll tear up the mech. So, nice and gentle. Yeah. Mechatronic next. So, Mechatronic takes controls then from the gearbox control unit, and this is what does all the actuation of the valves inside the transmission. So, this has got uh, this is the brains. This is the brains. This has got the four gear position sensors on it. Uh, one speed sensor, two a remote on looms. Uh, and then all the clutch, that's K1, K2 clutch valves, gear valves, main pressure valve, pressure release valve. So 
the, yeah, this does the thinking. Are they quite robust? Quite reliable? Yeah, they are pretty good. The only times we sit, we see problems where people don't change the hydraulic fluid, and the gear position sensors, which I'll show you in a minute, get covered in swarf. Not like that sort of nasty film you get on your magnetic sump bungs, not chunks. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is that makes the gear position recognition really difficult for the control unit because the magnetic field is being messed up by the fact it's covered in swarf. So, right, I've got to take that loom off. Right, get the tab right and then just... So that's the speed sensors. You just need to make sure you don't pinch it or do anything. Last screw out, like so. And then we're gonna pull the mech towards us. And you're gonna have, take it off the dowels. There you go. So there you go. So four position sensors and then two speed sensors. So the two pokey out middle ones, the two big ones, yep. are the uh, two speed sensors, and then the two top and the two bottom are gear position. So what I'm gonna do is, gonna... That looks expensive. These are about four grand. Okay. Right, so if you come around here, mate, you can see what I was saying about swarf. You see that? Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's just film, nasty film. So we get some cars in where we do, where we literally just take the metal out and clean this crap off. And it absolutely transforms how the gearbox behaves. See, it's not, it's not. It's a small, it's a minor thing, yeah, but yeah. it makes, makes a big difference. Yeah, do a lot of cars like that. So that's the mech out. I've got two tubes to pull out here and here. And then I've got the clutch to pull out the front. So that's a stock clutch plate or stock clutch cover, sorry. And we've got the Dodson. I built the clutch already. Okay. Um, so I'm going to Israel in a couple of weeks to go out and build a gearbox for someone. So they've got a twin turbo R8. So. Ah, oh, like the guy that was in the other day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So he's flying me to Israel to go and build my gearbox. So that's diff, full gear set, full clutch, ring and pinion, diff cover, sump cover. Yeah. That's going to be trick. Yeah. I would suggest you take the GoPro. Why? Don't you want to cut? <laughs> so, same kind of thing again. This is just getting the cover to pop slightly. Is this on an O ring? So just give it a wiggle. Like a so. And this is going to absolutely piss fluid out. Like so. So that's the four wheel drive shaft. That's the clutch stator. Yeah, so this whole piece is what supports the clutch. There's two needle bearings, front and back. Then the front cover's got a bearing in it. So that's what holds the complete clutch assembly. And on the back of the clutch, that's always constantly driven, is the gear drive for the oil pump, yep. which is the oil pump. This here is the drive shaft for the other side. Yeah, so that's the long shaft and then a the short shaft comes out of the diff, this side. So diff just lives over to the left. Front oil splash guard, and then that's clutch one and clutch two speed sensors here. Right, so it monitors the clutch, it monitors the clutch speed. Um, so we're gonna take this cover off, I'm gonna take this stator off, but before I can get the stator off, I've gotta turn it on its back and drop the oil pump out. Yep. So there's certain things we've gotta do. So, right, I've got a mech out. I've got the clutch off. Uh, let's tip it forward, empty oil everywhere, and we'll pull the sump off. And I can pull the oil pump out. So let's do that. Try again, Dab, shall we? Go for it. Oh, it's missing on that side. Yeah. A strange whirring in the background, that's an electric car. La we uh. should ignore that. It's not mine, we don't work on electric cars. 
Right, so, sump bolts. This sump is plastic. It is easy to break. It has a filter in the bottom of it and it never gets replaced. <laughs> so is it a special type of oil these take? Yeah, DCT fluid, so yeah. you can't use manual gearbox oil. And you can't use ATF, because this is a hydraulic fluid as well. Is that something that needs to be changed regularly? Or is it uh, yeah, yeah, so it should be every four years, or, which our clients never do, 40,000 miles. Yeah. Um, and it does make a huge difference. You get so many cars in with sort of driving complaints. And just by doing simple things, they're transformed. So the pickup for the oil pump is in the box. Look at this, like that. Yep. Oil filter, and then you've got these two magnets here. Lovely. Yeah. So, oil pump, that's the pickup point, which is in the bottom of the sump. I've taken the shroud off of the connector, which is here. So we're literally going to undo the mountain bolt. Pop this cover out. Right, Dad, can you see down inside? Can you see the two silver tubes? Yep. Right, so you've just got to watch. Oh, bloody hell, they're tight. There we go. Pop them out of the way. Like so. Right because they're pushed into the oil pump. So I'm going to pull that connector off. Yep. This one here, and then I can drop the oil pump out. Lovely. Right, so it's sound dowels, so it should. There we go, she's coming. She's on two pipes and two dowels. There it goes. There we go. Like so. So make sure you bring your two plastic pipes with you. Yeah. Seen had gearboxes in that have had work done and they've been missing. Oh. Yeah you get no hydraulic pressure. So that is literally just hydraulic pump. All right, so you gotta make sure you get them two pipes in. There's another one over here, which is a feed tube, just here. And then there's another main one here. So check the integrity of the rings and just make sure they're all good. So I think we've touched on in previous videos that this is a, it's a strong unit. Yeah, so. But with limitations. It has got limitations. So I've got one outside at the minute that has got a burst clutch, right? So. They are good, and people go, oh, yeah, yeah, 1,000 horsepower, mate, 1,000 horsepower, right? And the conversation we'll always have with clients is, what are you doing with it, yeah. right? So I would probably say the one who's abused this platform the most in this country is uh, Buzz, Buzzy Singh, yep. yeah? So his car's in the eights, in the low eights. T1 motor, built gearbox, and you chat, you chat with him, and he's got gearboxes coming out of his ears because the car is built for drag racing. Yeah. So Jürgen's the same. They're gonna have, their limitation is never gonna be the power the car can make. The limitation is gonna be putting the power to the floor. Yeah. Right? So, stock car, yes. 600 foot pounds is the limitation. That's where you normally start seeing like things like second gear burst and stuff like that, right? So you've got to be careful. That's just from torque, because remember a gearbox is a torque multiplier. So if your engine makes 600 foot-pounds of torque, first gear is roughly three to one, your transmission is dealing with 1,800 foot-pounds of torque in first gear, all right? Then you've got the other side of it as drag racing kills everything. Yeah. Because people go drag racing and then they go, oh yeah, yeah, we'll put these Balak bead locks on them. Mickey Thompson tires and all that stuff. Right, so now what you've done is, you've completely removed the slip. So, you're not gonna get your transmission to slip off a line now. You're gonna get it, you're gonna get it to grip. So now, where you did have the release of power because you had slip, you don't have that anymore, so something's gonna break. So, one of two things normally, either the long stub, this, is gonna snap, and it's gonna snap off at the diff, uh -huh. or, you're gonna burst a clutch, or you're gonna burst second when you drop second. I've seen quite a few cars with broken clutches because people launch the living daylights out of them. Because they do launch well as stock. Yeah. But, uh, what was the car, the car I looked at buying? No, didn't we do an inspection the other week? 199. Uh, yeah, 199 launches on wow. the gearbox. 
Yeah, and it doesn't count any more than that, so that could be 10,000 launches. <laughs> and it's like, oh. So that, that was a sales inspection we did for a customer. And like, you, you know, normally high, high launch cars go hand in hand with clocked number, clocked mileages. Okay. So there's one for sale at the minute, and it's clocked. Dynamite red, bright red, right? Don't touch it, it's clocked. Tell you now. We get so many cars in that we inspect because it's so easy to clock. Yeah. So um, if you're going to look at a car, ask whoever's inspecting it for you. We do. We just done an inspection yesterday. We haven't done one this morning, have we? Yesterday we done it, didn't we? Um, get the mileage. Get the mileage checked, and get the launches checked if you're buying a Gen Two. Gen One's much harder to clock, but you can still check the launches if you've got DCT. But that's why they break clutches, because of launches. Because um, people just go and launch the bloody things. So you just gotta watch that. Um, as for when this customer's not necessarily putting these upgrades in because uh, he's, he's the power he wants to make, he's putting these upgrades in because if it throws a gearbox out the back, it's more expensive than doing the upgrades. Yeah. So it's, it's that point where you, you, it, the same mentality is where you would put rods and pistons in, you, you know, a Golf R or uh, when you're starting to push to the point where you're like, if this breaks, it's a bad day. Same kind of thing. You know, all right, you can find second-hand gearboxes, but a new gearbox is 35 grand. It's a lot easier to take the precautions now, isn't it? Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly, that. exactly that. So that's, that's what we're doing. So it's having a big clutch, and then it's one, it's future-proof, and two, it just gives him that peace of mind on reliability. Yeah. So, so in, the bot in the bottom of the stator, there is a little tube. So make sure you get that out. Make sure you get the orientation right. So I will put that there which I'm going to knock over. Was it safe? But it's safe. Somewhere so safe, I forget what it is. All right. R right. So I've got my pipe out at the bottom. I've got my four bolts out. I'm just going to pull the stator away from us, like so. It's sat on pins, but I give it a wiggle. And then this. There's three orifices in the back. So you've got your two bearings, your oil pressure rings. They're like little piston rings. And then your ports that come out, the oil pressure come out, and it goes into the clutch. And then if you look here, look down. Yeah, now you can see two input shafts. Ah, there we so go. So you've got one set of splines here. You can see the, out, the other ones yep. moving. There so there's go. your two input shafts. All right. So that's gasket, stator out. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to flip it back on its side. I'm going to pull the two pipes out for the mechatronic unit. And then we'll literally pull the back cover off. Right, so we're just undoing the casing screws, but it's getting harder because honestly, DCTF, you're, it's more slippery than being at a swingers party sponsored by KY Jelly, I swear <laughs> to God. Mate. <laughs> hey? Yeah? Oh, in the last video, we did do a shout out for biscuit sponsorship. Yeah. We, just wait, we don't want to be sponsored by any lubrication why not companies i'm up for getting i make sponsorship is sponsorship uh i need to get these free caps off there is no professional looking way of doing it so i think we're going to use the magic of youtube mate and buzz the casing screws off took the end caps off because you have to be an animal to get them off um so it's all right they're off you have to be an animal and not damage the, the plug ends. Uh, I've got all the bolts out, so we'll spin them out. There's a trick of the trade, so I'm not giving away the keys to the city, but we have got them undone. We have to keep some secrets, don't we? Yeah, exactly. Yep. So, so we've got them out. So what I'm going to do now is I have a special dealer-only tool. Um, so I'm going to pull this end case off uh, and we'll be back in a minute. Right, rear case in. Ready? So it's off. Special tool. There we go. All right. 
So just make sure piston seals in straight underneath. Everything's clean, look, no big swarf. Yeah. Looks All pretty good. good to my entry and die. It does. Looks good to my entry and die as well, dear boy. <laughs> but if I show you this, look. Over here. Oh, Sorry, mate. Watch me slippy floor. I am going very, very So, deeply. remember what I was saying about these magnets, look. The position sensors. Yep. So, like, look at that. So, that is what you're battling. Right. So, three O rings, gently, gently. Now, remember, you're in a realm now where you can't buy any of this stuff. You break it, yep. you have bought it. <laughs> so. So none of this is available separately. None of this is available, in. nope. You wanna buy anything what you see now, yep. that is a complete gift. Or, don't do it. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't do it. So. Like there's a there's a there's a magnet look don't look too bad. No big chunks, just a little bit of like at the end of the day it's a bloody gearbox. So, All right. So the top is a magnet. Bypass tube. Again, they look good. Just make sure you get them out. Don't damage them. Another bypass tube. So. <laughs> The next problem is I'm going to pull this pinion circlip off round here. I think I'm going to have to clean the floor again, isn't I, mate? Because you're skating. We'll be okay. Um, yeah. So these bits all come off. Second gear you got to pull. Right. I'm going to pull the pinion off because that's again. I don't want to give the keys away to that. I'm going to pull this circlip off. We we'll drop the pinion out. In the meantime, I'm going to give the floor a quick clean because Dad's upset that his new pumps. Are the thinking bit starts. So, because I've got to get to second gear, which is all the way in the bottom of the gearbox, I may as well start pulling some gears out now. So, what we're going to do is, we're going to lift off seventh and seventh pinion. We're going to lift off first, so everything's pretty much loose this end. I'm going to take the selectors out. I'm going to put them down there because my top drawer is filled with all my crap. I'm going to get that off, then I'm going to pull this pinion circlip. So, you shouldn't need to put a lot of force on this, so this is literally just winding out by hand. As you can see, yeah, so we just pull in seventh. Just watch the speed ring underneath because you'll be an absolute penis if you damage that. That's a technical term there. That is a technical term, Dav. Oh. So literally like that, see? So very, very careful. So, a bit of cardboard, right. Now, I know I'm gonna take first, right. Seventh, sorry, I'm gonna take the bear in. I'm gonna take synchro, right. So, the synchro, there's a bulk ring. So what we're gonna do in a minute, we're gonna take some photos, right. So, seventh, bulk ring sits in seventh in the slipper. Yeah, and it's opposite the other way around. So you just use your noggin. Pay attention. Pay attention, right? Because if I pull that now, all the slippers are going to go everywhere. So what I'm actually going to do, you know, push my trolley out of the way. Fighting chance. Because remember, the only time you find out you fucked up building one of these is when it's in the car full of oil and running. Yep. It's not like a manual. We're gonna, it doesn't matter how many you've bloody done. There we go. So, all right, bolt ring. Some slippers will come out and then the others are pinched. So you just got to be a little bit careful because you don't want it to drop itself and go everywhere. There's one. These are the bits that fly everywhere. So these are the bits you got to look after. They're the detents. So they hold the locking collar in that neutral position. Uh -huh. This is the one that's tabbed in. So if I get my screwdriver in there, I should be able to tab it back. And it's slippered. 
Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. There we go. So, three detent. They're the detents, yeah. And then basically, what you got to do is, you've got to get your locking collar to hook in. Okay. So, did you get that? I'm joining me again. Just go in again. Go in. There we go. Okay. They look very small and easy to lose. They are small and easy to lose, and they get worse because some of them have got little bearings behind them. So, we're going to lift off seventh and fifth. Right, so that's locking collar. And then can you see, that's what the detents sit in, them flats, yeah? Yep. So, <clears throat> I've got oily hands now. Yeah. You got it on video, it's fine. So, <laughs> groove up. Groove up, groove up. So, now we need to pull first off. Um, and then we can get the rest of these off because if you look down here, look, if you look down here, look, that's a Welsh thing, isn't it, mate? <laughs> if you look down here, look, bud, first is blocking fifth. Yeah. Yeah, so I need to take that off. So, so nice and gently, just make sure you're not pinching on anything. So, it's the spacer that's retaining the gear. So, that's the spacer that sits in the bearing in the end case. Then you've got collar. Listen for the ping first. Yeah, first gear bearing. We have another collar underneath. Then we have locking collar and synchros. So it's a double first on Audi boxes. We've normally got two. So I've taken one synchro ring out. I'm gonna take the others out, so there's more. I'm gonna take this out. Right. Oh, if it'll come. Come on, sweetheart, there you come. So there we go. It was in first gear. Right, this is the bit where I said. Don't cock up, because that's, so you remember with the detents we had on seventh, just had a spring behind them. Right, that's, a, that's a, a piece with a ball bearing inside and a little spring. So if I pull that locking collar off, you've got three ball bearings, three springs that are literally gonna fight for the direction they're going in. Yeah, these are a, be steward to get out. So what we normally do here is, Put a bag over it, tuck it under, yeah. and just pop it. Okay. Ah. Yeah? It went ping. This is where it's still all fall inside anyway. So. At least it's all contained in this area. Yes. <laughs> so. Oh. Let's count our pieces out. One. Two of those. Right, that one, that one. So, we're at the detent. There's the last bit. So, I am missing a ball bearing. I've just dropped it under the gear. Yeah, but that's those bits. Then I can take the locking collar. So, that is, we obviously took seventh off, and that's fifth. So we've got bearing collar, the uh, synchronizer hub with the bolt ring sat down inside. Then your synchros, synchronize our rings. So they are what uh, synchronize the gear on shift or synchronize, so synchronize the gear speed on shift. There is the gear, like a soul. And then there is our de bearing. Very nice. To protect it, we will uh, remove it. Like a so. And then put it on a piece of cardboard on the floor. Like that. So, 
nothing will come off that so what we are going to do now is undo the rest of the boltings oh, i've got to take pinion off so i'll do that quick um that is a nightmare job so uh, i'll do that quick uh, we'll undo the retaining bolts and then i normally uh crane it off yep uh, and then once it's off we can undo this locking collar and then i can lift this set off gearbox because i need to drop all this off to do what i need to do so please right pinions out uh i'm gonna bolt two ratchet straps to it and we're gonna lift the case off and hopefully it all goes swimmingly <laughs> of course it will we'll be fine so right so everything's loose we're gonna try and lift the gear set out this could go very well or very badly don't blame me i'm not a professional <laughs> <laughs> so there's three points you've got to keep knocking it on uh, I just had that punch so you just got to, there's three flat areas where you just got to kind of <laughs> knock it off the of dowels knock it off the of dowels I had it there it is Out you come. It's like the last little pinch. Hang on. Okay. You've got all of that one. Yeah. Put your fingers and toes. Right. Okay. So, two sets, mate. You grab that one. Okay. So that should sit like that. That's fine. Line it down is easy in one respect because you can hit on the input shaft to get it out, but it's harder in another way because everything then wants to collapse in on itself. So you just you just battle it whatever way. So I've always done it that way. I've lifted it out of the top. Um, the, I made it harder for myself, to be fair, because I stripped the gears off the back of the shafts. If I'd left them on, lifted it out as a cartridge and stripped that on the bench, we wouldn't have struggled as much then. Yep. But I wanted to try that way to see if it made my life more stable, stripping the gear shafts off, which it did. But then now, that is a ball ache. So, yeah, mate, back together. There we go. Let's change second gear, which we won't do now. I'll just, I'll just change second gear and get it back together. Yep. We'll give it a good clean. And then, yeah, that is a DCT stripped. In one sitting. In one shitting. <laughs> How are you, mate? Thanks. Oh, Smash a like and, like, like and subscribe. <laughs> that is a long old day. How long do you reckon that video is going to be? <laughs> I'm not even commenting. I don't have enough. No comment. It can be as long yeah. as it needs to be. So yeah. we'll just make sure that all the piston seals are in right. We'll make sure no O-rings are gone. I'll build it up as one cassette on a bench with all the gears back on it and we'll drop it in all as one. So nice. we'll be all right. Yeah, hit the buttons. Go and bother Carl. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>